G'day YouTube and welcome back to Perfecting Pete. Today we're going to be taking a look at the top five pieces of technology that I've used to help me on my weight loss journey. Let's take a quick look at the technology we'll be discussing. So as you've just seen, we're going to be covering my top five pieces of technology that's helped on my weight loss journey so far and certainly will continue to in the future. We're going to start with fitness trackers, could be a Fitbit, could be a range of other products. I happen to use an Apple Watch. Uh, we're going to talk about mobile phones. So it could be an Android. I happen to use an Apple iPhone. That's just the ecosystem I'm locked into and have been for a while. Uh, it could be a range of others. We're going to talk about wireless digital scales. Now, it's not the only number you should be tracking and it's not the only target that you should have in terms of weight loss, but it is important to keep accurate information. So we'll, we'll quickly discuss that. We're going to talk about active wear uh, or sports wear, how to keep comfortable while training. And we're going to finish with a blender, which really isn't that exciting, but it is pretty crucial for the type of nutritional program I'm on. And I think most people could benefit from a good blender if you're going through weight loss. If this is your first time joining us on the channel, thank you very much for watching. I release videos on a weekly basis just to track my weight loss journey, my own personal journey. I started at 111 odd kilos uh, just after Christmas in 2017. I've dropped uh, about 16 and a half, 17 kilos in the last three months. And really this channel is about tracking my journey, uh, all the tips and tricks I've picked up along the way and sharing them with YouTube. And most importantly, if you're a serial procrastinator like I was talking about losing weight for 20 years and never actually starting, hopefully this will provide you with a little bit of motivation, certainly some getting started tips to help you get off that couch and stop resembling it. So let's get started with fitness trackers. So this is the Apple Watch, and whilst the interface is different, it pretty much tracks all the same stuff as most other fitness trackers. In the activity app, you can see it's tracking my overall energy burnt throughout the day, any exercise I specifically told it to track, where it bumps up the frequency of heart rate measurements, and whether I've stood and moved at least 12 times throughout the day for general health. I've also got the Nike Run Clap app installed, which is great as it uses the GPS to automatically track distances when you go for a run, though it's not working for me at the moment. And that's about it. It's really just a device to collect the data that you can then analyze in your phone to make decisions about. So let's switch over to the mobile phone now. So here we are on my iPhone and I've got the activity app open. So as you can see, it's representing what you saw on your watch, although uh, I'm recording a day behind. So this is what, what the day ended at uh, with the activity app on the iPhone. So um, again, it's displaying the same information I can see on my watch, but I get a better presentation in terms of being able to to uh, scroll through my data um, over time. Um, really, that's I, I don't really use the activity app. It's kind of just the, the hub for all the data to come in. Uh, you can see it's tracking a range of information based on all of my health and fitness related apps. Uh, but, but fundamentally, I don't really use this interface to, to look at data. Um, and I'll show you why just quickly. So if I go to body measurements, uh, I can see my weight over time. Now, I'm looking at a weekly graph at the moment, so you can see it is, you know, traveling down over time, which is what I'd expect. Um, but I really, it's difficult to, to kind of get a bigger picture view of it. And if I switch to monthly, um, I get a little bit more information, but again, I can see the trend, but it's pretty difficult to make decisions based on this sort of stuff. So, uh, and if I go to yearly, obviously it's a, you know, it's, it's five data points, so it's essentially useless. So I don't really use this app very often. What I do use, uh, for this type of information. Sorry, I was in the Apple Health app. The activity app is is just a representation of of um, what you saw in, on the watch earlier. So you can see yesterday I did a lot of exercise. Um, you can see my total energy burned and you can grab some details about that. So I burned 15,828 kilojoules yesterday. Um, out of that, I, um, I had a, 143 minutes of exercise and I stood 18 times throughout the day. And you can see, you know, if I, if I was, um, you know, sitting still for a long period of time. So that's, that's the activity app. Anyway, so, so what I generally use um, to, to look at information about uh, my overall health and fitness is the Lose It app, which I've talked about a few times uh, on my channel. Uh, but fundamentally, this is a view of my energy intake uh, for each day. Anything in red means that I've actually gone over my budget, although I'm not really tracking to budget, I'm tracking to macros. You know, see the nutrient breakdown um, for each day. So this was uh, yesterday, Sunday. 
Um, you can see I wasn't too good with, with carbohydrates, although, you know, being a Sunday, it was a cheat day. If you have a look at something like a, a Thursday and Friday, that's actually my macro targets represented there. Um, but what I do like about this app is you set a, set a goal for your weight loss and based on when you started and, and where you are today, it'll actually track the tr trend for you on a single easy to read graph. So uh, what you're looking at right now is a graph from the very beginning when I started tracking my weight loss goal to today. And you can see this morning I was 94.6 kilos. So uh, it also tracks my body fat. Um, it'll track carbohydrates. I haven't had anything today because it's a fasting day, but it'll track your, your carbohydrates, fat, and protein. Uh, and that's pretty much it for this app. You can see this is where I'm logging all my foods. So if I go back to a fasting day, you can see, you know, I had three coffees. That's a custom recipe I've created. It's not difficult in either, you know, Lose It or MyFitnessPal or any other tracking app. You can see that I've I've uh, set up some custom recipes. That's uh, indulgence is a type of coffee. So it's a black coffee with no sugar, which is why three, three cups of coffee is only 27 kilojoules. You can see my... Um, my mini meals, so where I break my fast uh, with my rice crackers and my protein, uh, and then my main meal with chicken, avocado, broccoli, brown rice. You can see I drink Coke, Coke Zero, so uh, five kilojoules for a can of Coke is not too bad. Uh, and I actually cheated on my dessert for uh, Friday. I had a um, couple of small tubs of, of yogurt instead of uh, a typical shake. Uh, so that's it for this app. Um, and just jumping back in, uh, we'll, we will talk more about the uh, the health manager app that you can see there from Bura uh, when we talk about the fitness scales. Um, but if I jump in quickly to Gym Boss is pretty much the other app that I've been using to help me with my weight loss program. So, um, you know, doing a time under tension um, exercise regime means that I've got to do, you know, several exercises uh, in a cycle and then rest and then you know, go straight into the next pair of exercises, rest, pair of exercises, rest, and then I have to complete the entire thing five times. So I found it very difficult to do something simple like use a stopwatch to track time, particularly where I'm spending 20 seconds on uh, each exercise, so 40 seconds back to back, and then a 30 second rest, and then back into it. So I found this app, I don't think it cost me anything, it might have cost me a couple of dollars to unlock the extra features, I don't think it did though, uh, called Gym Boss. And you can literally set it up exactly as I've just described. So you create a program, you tell it how many rounds for the entire program, and then you add uh, steps along the way. So I've color coded mine. It's very easy to see. And I've even put in the names of each exercise. So, you know, before I start exercising, if I haven't done that particular routine for a while, I'll just quickly flick through and look at the names of the exercises and remind myself what those actually are so that when I start exercising, I can get straight into it. I'm not wasting time. So that's it for... Um, you know, the mobile phone, as I said before, really, it's just about collecting data points. And, you know, the, the Apple Watch or the fitness tracker is one major source of data points. The other major source for me is my uh, wireless digital scales, which we'll talk about in a second. And then using it to, you know, feed that information into your f mobile phone uh, and then making some decisions around it. So, um, again, you know, if you do spend some more time in, in the health app, I know there's probably not too much of an equivalent in, in other operating systems. I'm not too familiar with Android, but I can actually see all of the information that I've collected uh, over time. So, um, you know, body fat percentage, um, a lot of this comes from my scales. Um, there's also uh, health records around my heart, so I can, I can see my heart details over time uh, and track trends to make sure that uh, my health, you know, my, my heart rate is, is reflecting my increased health. Um, yeah, so there's there's a plethora of information that you can you can delve into if you really want to, to better understand your body and, and the changes that you're undergoing while you're going through weight loss. Anyway, I think it's time to talk about um, scales, so I might switch over to that. So, wireless digital scales. Now there's heaps on the market. I had an iHealth uh, H5, I think it was. I'm now using a Bura. Um, you know, essentially they're just just scales. Uh, you could be manually writing it into your phone as to what you weigh on a regular basis. For me, um, I like the fact that that it um, plums wirelessly straight into an app on my phone. That app then talks to Apple Health, which is kind of the central repository for all my health information, which we just saw in the last segment. Um, so I'll show you. Uh, 
how the product actually weighs you. It also gives you full readouts on a range of other related information to your health. So it'll, it'll give you your BMI. It'll also give you a body fat estimate, uh, water estimate, muscle mass, lean, you know, lean tissue mass. Um, so it gives you a range of stats and it tracks that over time. And as you can see from the app, um, you know, I'm, I'm doing this on a daily basis. Well, we will talk at some point about why I'm tracking that on a daily basis. There is a reason for it. It's not something I'd probably recommend for most people. Um, keeps a full diary of my entire history of all the weight that, that I've ever measured through the scales. Uh, and again, it's wireless. So it, it talks in Bluetooth directly to my phone uh, and tracks it on the app. So I'm essentially using my phone as my central repository for all health related information that I can, I can then use and analyze and make decisions based upon. So that's it for wireless digital scales. Not a huge topic really. Weigh yourself, do it accurately, do it regularly. That's all there is to it really. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is active wear. Now, you know, I've got a friend who hates active wear and, and, and really thinks that anyone who, who wears that sort of clothing, you know, and we're talking sports, sports wear. Uh, if you're a woman, it's, you know, typical, typically Lorna Jane, the, the sorts of things you see people wearing in a gym, you'll actually notice I'm usually wearing a Nike shirt or a, uh, I'm actually wearing an Under Armour cap. Um, you know, I'm not particularly married to a specific brand. I, I have tended to gravitate towards those two brands just because I like the clothing, I like the style. But essentially, I'm usually wearing this while I'm recording because I'm usually recording straight after I've done some sort of exercise, some sort of exercise rather. Um, you know, so I've got a friend who, who really doesn't agree with the whole movement of, of active wear. And you do see a lot of people getting around every day doing their groceries and, and um, you know, sitting in cafes eating, you know, 3,000 kilojoule breakfasts uh, whilst wearing sports gear. So, you know, to an extent I do kind of agree, but, you know, I'm a bigger fella and I have to say that synthetic socks and jocks changed my life. So as a bigger person, you know, sportswear, some of the first sportswear I, I wore was essentially to stop chafing. A really horrible topic to talk about. We're not going to go into any more detail, but as a bigger bloke, you you know, if you're doing any kind of walking or running or jogging, you know, where you, your thighs are rubbing against each other because I'm overweight, they, they used to do that, um, you know, I'd have horrible chafing and it would actually make it difficult to, to train on a regular basis. So um, I found synthetics. So, um, you know, there's, there's a couple of those companies I just named. There's Adidas. There's, there's a whole range. Um, that now makes synthetic underpants or synthetic boxer shorts or you know whatever you're into wearing um, that will essentially cut that chafing down considerably. Same goes for socks. Um, you know a good pair of shoes. I used to when I used to jog on a regular basis and I mean like on a daily basis. I actually found I went through four pairs of brands like well-known branded shoes. Um, you know and they were running shoes. They weren't sneakers. Before I found some that didn't make my my ankles hurt like the dickens every time I went for a run. Um, turns out that, you know, I, I spent some time in a, in a store that actually goes through uh, and measures your walking gait. And it turns out that I'm, I'm very highly overpronated. Uh, I also have an extra wide foot for the size. So I went and had some, some shoes recommended to me after that fitting. And I've got to say the Brooks that I'm wearing now, they're specifically designed for overpronators. Uh, it is, it comes in a wide shoe. They are like walking on clouds when I'm exercising. So you know, the amount of money that companies like Nike and Adidas and Puma and, you know, Under Armour are pouring into research for technical fabrics, you know, whilst there's lots, you know, they are making a lot of money just selling it to average Joe, but for the people that are actually using it for its intended purpose, it has made a world of difference. I used to train in just a typical t-shirt. It wasn't a particularly heavy cotton t-shirt, but I certainly trained in, in a standard shirt and board shorts. And the freedom of movement, having proper sportswear designed for, for exercise uh, has, you know, totally changed things for me significantly. So I'm completely free to move in the shorts that I'm wearing at the moment. They're sports shorts. This shirt, the amount of sweat, I, I, you know, as a bigger person, I sweat a lot. Um, so having shirts that are designed to, to um, wick sweat away from the surface of the skin certainly keeps me feeling cooler and certainly keeps me more comfortable while I'm exercising. So... You know, from my perspective, it, it is a technology. They've spent a lot of money on R&D into this sort of stuff. So uh, it, I can, it kind of fits the, the categorization for me. Um, you know, I would I have invested in, in quite a lot of sports where I cycle through it. I haven't bought more than I really need. Maybe I have. Eh, maybe I have a little bit. But 
Um, by and large, I'm, I bought it because I wanted to use it for the purpose it was intended for, and I'm really glad I did. So that's the fourth piece of technology really from me is activeware. Now, to talk about blenders, I'm gonna take you into the kitchen. So I'm just gonna to cut to that now. Right, so here we are in my kitchen to talk about a really important piece of technology that I use every single day, particularly when I'm fasting, the blender. So this is the third blender I've tried for, um, for blending up the, the types of, of shakes that I'm, I'm drinking, uh, usually as a dessert meal. Um, you know, I went through a really old, like a 400 year old blender um, that uh, someone else in the house had. Um, that thing was crap, it couldn't cut through the ice. Um, you know, and I've found, particularly with some of these thicker shakes, um, you really, really do need ice in it, just to cool it down. There's a lot of materials in here that aren't refrigerated, uh, and also to, to thin it out a little bit. Um, so I bought the little uh, Nutri Ninja Mini. You know, there's there's probably ten brands out there that are the same thing, uh, but it was quite a quite a small blender, but it was excellent. It was only 700 watts, um, but it cut through ice no problems. So what I did find is when I went from phase one to phase two of Science Base Six Pack, the shakes that I was having were a lot thicker and a lot higher in volume. So whilst the the amount of you know of liquid that you end up drinking is roughly the same as it always was. Because you're adding thicker components, I'm tending to add more ice. I'm adding a little bit of water now. So I actually found that small unit was too small. I couldn't fit everything in it. So I've recently upgraded to this. Um, this is the 1000 watt. Um, I'll put the, the actual name of the product up. Uh, it doesn't really matter what the product is. The point is it's a good blender that's um, you know specifically good for cutting through ice. It needs to be able to blend ice. So I figured whilst I'm standing here in my kitchen, um, it's a little bit late, but I'm, I'm starving. I haven't had anything since breakfast. So I'm actually gonna make the shake that I referred to in my last video. So if you wanna, wanna check out the link, the link should be over here somewhere, or maybe it's over there, I'm not really sure. So we're just gonna quickly make a, um, a protein shake that I talked about uh, in the last video. So I usually have this for dessert most nights, um, particularly after having a chicken meal specifically. So. Um, I've already prepared everything to make it a little bit quicker. Here's one and a half servings of protein powder. So I'm just going to throw that in there. We've got half a cup of almond milk. I have noticed that even... Oh look and I've spilt some protein powder. That's mildly frustrating. But that's alright. Let me get rid of that. Uh, we've got a quarter of an avocado, so I've prepared that earlier. Throw that in. Put that off. Uh, we've got uh, half a tablespoon of raw cocoa powder. Um, so that's, as I said in the last video, it just gives it a nice chocolatey flavor. We've got um, half a cup of plain rolled oats, just to give it some carbohydrates. Uh, that's as raw as I could get them. Uh, and then finally a quarter of a cup of uh, plain non-fat Greek yogurt. So I might just get a spoon. Hopefully the noise isn't too unpleasant. Okay. And then of course I've got lots of ice. And Finally, I've, I choose to put half a cup of water in as well, um, just to, to thin it out a little bit more because I do find it, it gets very thick. Now, it's as simple as trying the lid on. I like to give it a bit of a shake just to try and get some of the protein powder off the top because I do notice that it tends to clump in these large containers a little bit. Now I'm going to turn the volume of the mic all the way down because this is going to make horror, uh, horrendous noise. So give me one second. And that's it. That's all there is to it. I just jumped off screen to, to um, put the mic back up again so you can actually hear me. But one blended protein shake. Now this has got plenty of carbohydrates, good quality fats, uh, and a heck of a lot of protein in it. Uh, as I said, I usually have, usually have this for a dessert meal, but uh, 
I love it. So look, it's a non-essential piece of technology. At the end of the day, you could easily get the same macronutrients out of a um, yeah, out of whole foods without using a blender. Um, you could potentially supplement that with some protein just using a typical shaker. But I do find that these types of things, particularly if you're trying to hit macro targets, um, you know, a good quality blender, is, blender uh, I think is really important. Anyway, I'm going to take you back to um, my normal recording studio. I'll see you in a sec. And we're back in the study. So blenders aren't all that exciting, but you know, I do think it makes sense to invest the right amount of time and effort in selecting one that's going to do the job that you needed to do. In my case, the, the types of shakes I'm drinking, I can't just throw the ingredients in a bottle and shake them around. I needed something that could blend ice effectively, uh, and I'm using it every single day. It's been pretty crucial to my particularly nutritional program. So. That's it, that's my top five pieces of technology uh, that assisted me with weight loss. Why don't you drop me a comment and let me know what your favorite piece of technology as it relates to weight loss and fitness is. Um, if you, this is the, Again, if this is the first time that you've joined us, please mash that subscription button. I release videos on a weekly basis every Tuesday. Uh, they relate to, to my personal weight loss journey uh, and hopefully to provide tips and tricks as I learn them along the way in layman's terms. Just, I like to keep it simple and raw and, and you know, the no bullshit approach to, to what I'm going through in terms of losing weight. Hopefully it'll motivate someone to get up off that couch and stop resembling it. Um, hit the like button if you like this particular video. Leave me a comment. I reply to everything that comes up and I'll see you next Tuesday.